So yesterday we had the uh, discovery started up, but for some reason it wouldn't start off the key. Now the, the strange thing is that these have got a security system on them, and if, if it's out like a Defender or a Range Rover, it cuts the fuel supply off, it cuts the, the starter solenoid, and uh, cuts some, oh the ignition. But we've got ignition because it started, it, cut, it didn't cut the fuel off because that's running, so that was alright. But how I had to start it yesterday was by jumping it across with a screwdriver from the battery positive to the um, terminal on the starter. But was it? So what I've done is, to test your wiring to make sure it is the, the starter itself, a, a really simple trick is to take the starter wire off here and I put a new connector on because the connector was looking somewhat shonky. I don't know what the hell that was all about. So I put a new starter, a new, new crimp connector on here and I've connected it with a horn to ground. Now my friend Jerry's just in the car right now and he's going to turn the key now. That's it. So we know... Thank you Jerry. <laughs> So we know that the wire on the starter is good. So we know that the solenoid and the relay is good. We know all that's good. So what we need to do now is take that off, put it on the starter and find out what the problem is. So Jerry's gone back now, so I'm on my own, but at least we found out that wire, there's power going down it, which is a good thing. Now I've put the newly made connector onto the back of the starter solenoid and let's see if it starts now. But first of all, let's put the battery on because I can show myself up a bit. There we go, that's, about, that's on. And the answer is no. Because I know really what's wrong with this. You wouldn't believe it, but I'm going to take the camera off. I'm going to take this wire off. Good, good thing we can get to it. And we'll have a look. Right, there we are. Now, I've got the battery disconnected. You can see this isn't a, a regular Bosch type solenoid. It's a, a Wilson. But for me to get it started, I had to touch this little solder connection here, not here. You see what I mean? So there's a bad connection between there and this solder joint here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my uh, sandblaster out, and just the, the handheld sandblaster, blast around here, clean all this lot up, and hopefully we can make a contact between there and there, that's an awful blob of solder on there. And it hasn't sort of, uh, it's holding the contact down, but not making contact. So let me get my gear out. When I first came to Canada and I had a Series 3 109 chassis, I wanted it sandblasting. And now a neighbor said, I know just the man who will do it. All right, so we loaded the chassis onto a trailer and dragged it halfway across Canada. Well, oh, so it seemed to them days. And you know what he was using for sandblasting? One of these to do a chassis. You've got to be joking. I said, we've got to be there for months, years. <laughs> It'll be all rusty at the other end by the time you get it finished. Uh, these are a good little gun for doing spot blasting. That's it. Tiny, tiny spots. Um, excellent for doing light fixings, you know, the connections in lights. Brilliant for that. Not so good for doing big panels or anything like that. You'll be there forever in a day. Key to using them, low pressure. Like I've got 130 pounds on this uh, line, but this is regulated at uh, 40. If you put too much pressure with these, the air goes straight through the nozzle and sand hasn't got time to drop down. Simply. So I'm going to give this a quick clean up and then I'll get my solder line out. For this job, we're going to go back in time. Again, like Kylie, we're going to use an old-fashioned copper. You don't see many of these around, but by God, they're handy. Bye. 
far better than electric because they'll keep the heat in a lot longer and look at that nice point so how do you use one gas torch not near petrol flux now I sandblasted the tip of this and you can see how nice and tinned it is so when you've got it all nice and clean you can file it up it doesn't really matter when it's hot dip it in your flux and then tin it using some solder and you can see that solder's well no you can't can you <laughs> you can see that solder's running even though there's I've, I stopped putting heat into it three or four minutes ago so what I'm going to do make sure the battery's off I'm going to heat that copper up I've already put some flux on the joint and then we're going to go down and stick it in <laughs> I'm going to turn that off before I burn my air because I haven't got much of it at the moment Right, so let's have a look, see if we can zoom in on it. It's certainly a lot better than it was. The light's not really in a good place, but I don't know if it's going to focus there. What we should really do is wash that flux off and uh, then put the connector on. Right, that's that on. That's out the way. Put the battery on. The battery's on the wrong way, that's the problem. I have to stretch the wires. Right. So let's see if it starts. It's not often I'm wrong, but this time I'm right. That was its problem. all it took a little bloody bit of solder so for the people who I bought this off telling porky pies saying that it, it was started before I don't think so but then again thinking about it this start has been on a long time so it must have started at one point it did not start to uh, noisy well noisy and fast I topped up the uh, power steering. It took nearly a litre to top it up. It must be a bad seal on, the, on this power steering. How odd. But I don't want it to burn the pump out because the pumps are expensive. So I figured out why the tachometer wasn't working because I didn't have the wire on this last pin here. Uh, this one here is almost bent over because I threw it in the scrap. But the other one, because I threw it in the scrap, had bent right over and I couldn't see it. So hopefully now, we should have a tachometer. That's idling at a thousand, it's a little bit high, it should be around about 750, 850. Still it doesn't sound too bad does it? It was a bit rattly at startup, but I, I expect that. Um, I mean, main bearings might be getting a bit worn, who knows. So that's that done, it starts off the key. I'm happy, I'm happy about that. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll box up here a little bit. I'm still not going to put the bonnet catch on, I'll put it on the safety catch just in case. Uh, I'll grab some petrol because no doubt it'll run out of petrol because it was spewing out yesterday. And we'll see what it goes like for a drive. Mm -hmm. 